Golko here with Thaddeus Ward, who's gotten off to a nice start to his major league career. Thaddeus, thank you for taking a couple minutes. Yeah, thank you for having me. My pleasure. Uh, maybe first on-camera interview with the Nationals, so this is really the honors on your ends more so than mine. Uh, Thaddeus, let's talk about your first month-plus in the big leagues. Um, you know, you grind in the minor leagues for a number of years. You, you wait for this opportunity. Here it comes with the Nationals. What has this last month plus been like for you? I mean, it's it's been great. It's really been everything you pretty much dream about when you're growing up and you think about what big league baseball is like. It's been pretty much every, every bit of that. Um, you know, and the, having all the guys around me, having a great clubhouse culture, and especially with the bullpen, having a lot of guys helping me out with kind of building routines and, you know, what it takes to go day to day as a reliever. I mean, it's been it's been great. It's been everything I could ask for. What part of it, either in terms of the on the field stuff, the stuff at the ballpark or the stuff away from the ballpark, the travel, the hotel, whatever, has been maybe even better than what you had dreamed it would be? Um, I would say probably the travel and the hotel stay and stuff like that has been, I mean, Obviously, you coming up through the minor leagues, you stay at Motel 6, and you're there from you know, after a 14-hour bus ride versus you know, a three-hour plane flight. So it's been the travel in the hotels has been great. My, I mean, my wife will absolutely attest to that. So, yeah, it's been fantastic. So you get taken by the Nationals this last winter in the Rule 5 draft. You were the number one pick in the Rule 5 draft. Take us through that entire process when you're left uh, – not on the 40 man by the Red Sox, which leaves you eligible for the 40 man. What that period was like for you as the organization that you came up with was, you know, not guaranteeing you a spot. And now that let other teams have a chance to, to pick you and bring you to the big leagues. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously like there's, there's going to be some hurt feelings whenever a situation like that happens. And uh, I try to be, I try to take it as, you know, it's, it's a business it's a professional decision. You know, these things are kind of how, you know, the baseball world works. Um, there were guys that definitely, the guys that got taken, not taken, but protected on the 40 men definitely earned those spots. So it's not like it was really a slight against me to, to be not protected, but it was more of just, you know, you know, those guys earned those spots and I didn't. And, uh, Going into the Rule 5 draft itself, we had no idea what to expect. I was talking to my agent. agent had no, no idea what to expect. And, you know, we had heard rumors about teams that liked me and stuff like that. And, you know, obviously in the minor leagues, you don't play for one team. You play for 30. Um, and so it's during that whole process, just kind of stressing out over it, thinking, you know, you know in the next year, my entire life could change. And, you know, everything from down to where we live is going to be could be completely different. So. Uh, a lot of a lot of nerves going into it for sure, and then you know, after the day it happened, it was just excitement and just you know wanting to get out on the field, wanting to be here with the guys, and you know do what I can to try to add value. So, yeah, Tommy John surgery when you were in the Red Sox organization, you came back from that and you put up good numbers in in the minor league ranks. How do you feel like you've uh, progressed through that Tommy John rehab process and where you're at now stuff-wise and just how you feel about the way that you're going about it? Um, I've def definitely learned a lot of things throughout the rehab process. You know, it's the biggest battle of the, re the whole you know, rehab is the actual mental side of it. Uh, the physical stuff is typically not your biggest concern because, you know, you have a great staff around you. They know what they're doing and it's not their first rodeo. But the mental grind of it is what really gets guys. And, you know, you go through a lot of maturing and a lot of understanding. Like, at first you think, what what did I do? Uh, what didn't I do to try to prevent this? And a lot of times it comes down to it's just going to happen. And there's nothing you can really do about it. Um, I think some of the more important things I've learned is just mechanically kind of ways to be more sound and try to relieve some of this uh, pressure that I was putting on my elbow with the kind of the way I used to throw. And, you know, just I mean, you get 13 months of just hammering down on stuff like that. So it's really it's all about how you take it. And I try to take it as like a blessing in disguise. You know, I get a break for 13 months, mm -hmm. don't have to play. But I get to just sit there and learn and watch guys and see what they do and you know, how they keep themselves healthy. healthy. So what was the biggest takeaway there in that regard, mechanically or preparing your body uh, to for, for the grind of throwing a baseball that many times? Um, so definitely I realized much more the importance of having a, a strong base, like having a strong shoulder, having a strong core, having strong legs, making sure that everything is, you know, up to the standards that it needs to be in order to go through this uh, rigorous activity day to day. And, you know, before I probably was, la I was lacking in certain areas, whereas 
uh, not whereas, but throughout the process of the rehab, I was able to key in on those areas that I was lacking and really try to focus on building that up. Yeah. So now you're in the bullpen with the Nationals. This is something that's new to you. You'd been a starter prior to now. How do you feel like you're acclimating to a role that, to an outsider, might not seem like it's that big of an adjustment, but for a guy that, as a starting pitcher, is very routine-oriented and has days that he's not throwing, has days that he's getting in his workouts, has that now it's very different. Uh, what's that process been like? <laughs> well, it's, it's been very different, that's for sure. Um, but again, I've, like I said earlier, I've had a great group of guys around me in the bullpen that have been doing this stuff for years, and you know, they've really taught me ways to make sure my body is ready to go through and be able to be available to pitch every day uh, in different ways to kind of help with alleviating some of the soreness, some of the like, pain, obviously, that comes with having to do that every day. And... You know, it's it's just been it's just been an adjustment really, and it's finding a routine that works that puts your body in the best position to be able to bounce back. So, you know, you've gotten a handful of appearances under your belt now. Sometimes one inning, sometimes multiple, because you can do that. How? What's your level of satisfaction with the way that you've actually been pitching and learning major league hitters and going about, you know, trying to get some really good guys out at this level? Um, I mean, so. I think the, the most glaringly obvious one is the walks. Um, you know, this is not something that I'm, you know, this is not someone who, that's not what I do. It's not who I am. I'm not a guy that typically walks a lot of people. Um, you know, throughout my career, I've had stints where I've walked a couple of guys here and there, and but it's overall, it's, I, I don't, I'm not a guy that walks a lot of people, and that's something I'm definitely not happy about. And actually, something that we're working on constantly is making sure I'm staying in the strike zone because, uh, one of the things I've, I've learned and kind of discovered is that my, my stuff plays here. You know, I, I can get guys out. I can get weak contact. I can go and get strikeouts when I need to. Um, and I don't need to go and strike everybody out. I just need to try and go find weak contact. So it's been a lot of learning and making sure I'm you know, being a pitcher and not a thrower and not just out there trying to gas everybody up with 92 because that's not getting by anybody. You know, it's, it's stuff like that where it's mixing and making sure I'm in the strike zone really is the biggest key for it for me. Thaddeus Ward off to a really good start here with the Nationals. Thaddeus, good job uh, keeping your wits about you with Lane Thomas and Mason Thompson staring <laughs> in for part of this, and thanks for taking some time. Thank you for having me. It was, it was a pleasure.